Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Melissa and I'm the owner of SeasonAndServeBlog.com. Today I am back here again for our wedding series and I'm joined by my fiance David. Hi everyone. So in today's video we're going to talk a bit about how we're preparing for our wedding, which is only two months away. Yeah, I can't believe how fast that came by. Unbelievable. <laughs> <laughs> so a big part of what we're doing to prepare for our wedding is obviously trying to lose a bit of weight for our wedding we kind of want to look and also feel our best and by no means do you have to like go on a diet do you have to lose weight for your wedding but recently um we've been under a lot of stress obviously with lots of world events going on covid19 the stress of having to like replan our wedding which is now an elopement sort of thing and yeah there's just been a bunch of stuff going on We've been stressed though, and as a result, we've gained a couple of pounds. Yeah, and since we've been working from home, it's been very difficult to kind of move around. Like I usually bike to work and Melissa walks to work, so not being able to do those things kind of, it's nice to be able to get up in the morning and turn on your computer and you're at work, but at the same time, uh, you're missing out on a lot of the other activities that we're used to doing. So that's kind of why I wanted to make today's video. I wanted to give you some delicious, really seasonal, healthy summer recipe ideas that you can make at home that are like really simple, really easy to make and will help you start losing weight or start your weight loss journey or just like to feel healthy again. Yeah, summertime's <laughs> a great time to do that because lots of fresh veggies and fruits are available mm -hmm. and they're really cheap. You can get them locally here in Victoria, so you're not having to get stuff from all over the place. But these recipes, they're super seasonal, easy and healthy, and they use a lot of vegetables, fruits, lean proteins, and are low in carbs. And I know for me at least, having a low carb diet really helps contribute to weight loss for me. So no breads, no rice, no sugar, no alcohol, stuff like that. Again, I came up with these recipes myself, and I think they're relatively nutritionally balanced, but just a disclaimer, I'm not a nutritionist, so yeah, take that with a grain of salt. But I think they're pretty healthy. Yeah, well, everything tastes good, and I feel a lot lighter after eating the meals, so that's also a good bonus. Like, I'm not feeling like I'm super sleepy after the meals, and I feel like I have the energy that I need for my day. Mm-hmm. So yeah, that is our situation right now, and the rest of the wedding planning is coming along fine, getting ready for that in the next couple of months, and hopefully with these recipes, we'll be able to shed a couple of pounds. So we're excited, very excited. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so thanks for watching. I hope that you really enjoy these recipes, and we'll see, see you, you in, in the, the next, next video. video. Bye. Bye. My first healthy summer recipe is for these Greek chicken bowls. And bowls are a really great way to get in a bunch of different vegetables, proteins, and delicious healthy fats that are good for you. So let me show you how to make this recipe. We're gonna start off by cooking the quinoa. And I really like quinoa in this recipe because it's a little bit healthier than rice and has lots of protein. So I like to cook my quinoa in some boiling water, about two parts water to one part quinoa. And to make really good quinoa, before I cook it, I like to rinse it under some cold water just to get rid of that bitter taste that quinoa sometimes has. So while the quinoa is cooking, we're gonna go ahead and chop our vegetables. And here, I like to use all the vegetables that are typical of a Greek salad. So here you can see me cutting up some fresh tomatoes, and I'm also using some beautiful cucumbers. And if you can believe it, we actually grew this cucumber in our garden, and I can't believe how beautiful and green it is. And next we're gonna slice up some feta cheese. I like to slice it into these nice little rectangular slices, but if you want, you can also use the feta cheese crumbles as well. You can also totally admit feta if you wanna go dairy free, but I really like it in this recipe and you're not eating that much of it. I'm also gonna add in some kalamata olives because they have lots of delicious and healthy fats that are good for you, plus they're typical in a Greek salad. And then simply just set your toppings aside for now while we make our dressing. This Greek dressing is super easy and has a lot of delicious flavor. So here I'm just adding in some olive oil into a measuring cup, followed by some lemon juice. And for a really delicious and authentic Greek flavor, I am adding some dried oregano. And then I just like to top it with a little bit of pepper and then give everything a good mix. 
And once everything is combined, just set the dressing aside for now while we cook our chicken. To cook the chicken, I'm just gonna fry it in a frying pan with a little bit of olive oil. And I like to cut the chicken into cubes just so that they're easier to eat in the bowl. I also like to season the chicken with some more dried oregano and some salt and pepper to taste. For a little bit of extra flavor, I also like to add a squeeze of fresh lemon juice at the end of the cooking process to give the chicken a little bit more flavor. To assemble the bowls, add the quinoa to the bottom of the bowl followed by the chicken and then add all of your vegetable toppings on top. So here I'm adding the cucumbers, also adding in the tomatoes, and I love lots of tomatoes so I like to put extra in my bowl. I also add in the feta cheese here, and I'm just doing two slices, and a nice big generous handful of the Kalamata olives. And for a little bit of extra protein, I'm going to add a dollop of Greek yogurt on top of the Greek chicken bowl. Totally optional though, if you don't like yogurt, you don't have to add it here. And then to finish off the bowl, I'm gonna add a drizzle of that beautiful dressing that we made, and then just add a little bit of chopped fresh parsley on top for garnish. And there you have it, my recipe for my Greek chicken bowl. This recipe is so versatile, you can add whatever vegetables and protein toppings that you want, and I highly recommend making this in the summer. It is really good warm or even cold. My next recipe is my steamed fish, and while steamed fish may sound boring, this recipe is not. It has so many delicious Asian flavors, including ginger, garlic, and scallions. It is absolutely amazing. For this recipe, you'll need a piece of white fish, and here I am using haddock. I simply just place the haddock on the plate and set it aside while I prepare the rest of my ingredients. Here I'm chopping up some ginger, and I like to slice it into thin matchsticks. Once your ginger is chopped, set it aside, and then chop up some fresh garlic. Here I like to use about three cloves of garlic. You can go more or less if you like, but for me, I really like garlic, and three cloves is the perfect amount for me. And don't forget, all the full directions and measurements will be on my blog, and the links to all the recipes in this video will be in the description box below. And once your garlic is chopped, go ahead and set it aside and then chop up some scallions. These scallions are absolutely huge, they're from our garden, so I like to cut them on a bias here. And now it's time to dress the fish. So add the matchsticks of ginger on top of the fish, followed by the sliced garlic, and then a splash of soy sauce. And the soy sauce is really great here. It flavors the fish and starts off the delicious sauce that it gets when it steams. And now it's time to cook the fish and I'm gonna steam it. And I'm using a wok set up here where I have some boiling water on the bottom and a little tray to hold my plate of fish on top. You can also just do this in a pan without the plate and it should also work as well. You'll wanna cover the fish so that it steams properly and it cooks in about five minutes. It really depends on how thick the fish is. But partway through cooking, I like to add on the scallions just so they kind of tenderize and I like to toss in a little bit of fresh lettuce to steam in there as well for some vegetables. So once all your veggies and scallions are added in, cover the lid and steam it for another few minutes until the lettuce and the scallions have wilted. And then carefully remove the plate from the steamer and go ahead and serve it while it's still warm. The steamed fish recipe is super flavorful, nutritious, and surprisingly very filling. So I highly recommend that you try out this recipe. And my next healthy summer recipe is this bruschetta chicken. And this recipe is really great for when you're craving Italian food and it uses beautiful, fresh, ripe tomatoes that are in season right now. This recipe is super protein packed and has no bread involved like regular bruschetta. So let me show you how to make it. We'll start off by making the bruschetta topping. And this is the exact same way that you would make regular bruschetta. You want to finely chop some fresh basil and add it into a mixing bowl along with some finely chopped parsley. You also want to make sure that you finely chop your garlic because you don't want to bite into a big raw piece of garlic when you're eating the bruschetta chicken. Next I like to chop up some vine ripened tomatoes and I absolutely love these in the summer because they're super flavorful and they are so deliciously juicy. Once your tomatoes are chopped up, add them to the bowl with the rest of the herbs and the garlic and add a little bit of salt, pepper and olive oil and give everything a mix and then set the bruschetta aside for now. Next we're going to cook our chicken, so add a little bit of olive oil to a pan and then add your chicken breast. Cook them for about 3-4 to four minutes per side until they're golden brown and cooked through. Once they're cooked through, you can top them with a little bit of shredded mozzarella cheese. And do this while the pan is still on low heat so that the cheese has the chance to melt. 
Then for a bit more flavor, you can add a little bit of the bruschetta juice into there and the juice from the tomatoes and the garlic and all the herbs kind of cooks down and becomes really concentrated and flavors the chicken a lot. So this is a really, really great step and I highly recommend that you guys do this. Next, cover the chicken to let the cheese melt. And then once all the cheese is melted and the tomato juice is nice and concentrated, you can just remove it from the pan and place it onto a serving plate. While the chicken is still warm, top it with that delicious bruschetta topping. And there you have it, my bruschetta chicken recipe. This is a really great healthy recipe to make for when you're craving Italian food and it's super refreshing in the summertime. And for my final healthy summer recipe, I have barely a recipe for raspberry sorbet. This is super refreshing, tangy, and delicious, and it'll curb any sweet tooth craving. All you need for this recipe is simply a frozen bag of raspberries, and that's it. All you do is just pop them inside your blender, and I have a Vitamix here, but if you have like a Nutribullet or like a small sort of blender like that, it'll also work in that too. If you have the Vitamix, put it on the frozen setting and then just blend away. You do have to pulse it a little bit and use the tamper to push all the frozen raspberries down, but it basically just pulverizes the raspberries and turns it into a beautiful raspberry sorbet. I also make this recipe with some frozen strawberries and I'll add a little bit of lemon juice and some mint. That is also a super great variation on this recipe as well. And after just a few minutes of blending, you can take the lid off and you have this beautiful raspberry sorbet. It is super smooth and scoopable and is absolutely perfect. And once it's done, you can just scoop it into little serving cups and garnish with a sprig of mint. This raspberry sorbet is super refreshing on a hot summer's day and it is 100% fruit, so it's super healthy for you. And there you have it, four delicious, easy, and healthy summer recipe ideas. Let me know in the comments box below which recipe you wanna make first, and don't forget all the full instructions and measurements are linked in the description box below. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in my next video.